So what we're going to see now is our first algorithm for finding equilibrium. This algorithm is called the support enumeration um, algorithm. And essentially what we're going to do is go through all possible supports of mixed strategies and using the best response condition, we simply find the Nash equilibria by solving a linear equation and checking a couple of things. Um, but we're only going to define it for non-degenerate games. So because we only consider non-degenerate games, degenerate games, that just makes it a bit easier for us um, and that we only need to consider supports of the same size. And uh, the algorithm goes like this, and I'll do an example of this to, to, to walk us through, but the algorithm goes like this. Step one is uh, to um, find all um, k less than or equal, so greater or equal to one, less than or equal to min of m and n, where m and n are the size of our two games. So that's just saying find all possible sizes of the support. So that's all supports of size one, all supports of size two, size three. Then in step two, um, identify all actual supports of those things. And then three is solve the linear equations. And these are essentially linear equations that ensure indifference. And they're just the linear equations that come from the best response um, condition. Step four is find probabilities. And that's just because this step here won't actually necessarily be uh, probabilities. Um, and so we'll just get then into probabilities. And then step five is check best response. So there's five steps to this. And I'll just go through an example um, on a simple game. The game we're going to use as an example has row utility matrix 1, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0, and column utility matrix a half, minus 1, minus a half, minus 1, 3, and 2. Now, the first thing in uh, the algorithm is to uh, go through all possible sizes of supports. Now, the first possible size is simply um, all supports of size one, but that's just pure strategies, and it's very easy to, it's very straightforward to just underline these strategies and do that. So we're not going to use the support enumeration algorithm for that. So the first one you can look at is supports of size two. So for the row player, they're definitely going to be one, two. So that's the only support of size two is for the row player to play both their strategies, right? Now for the column player. We have three possibilities for size two. Um, so J belongs to either one, two, which corresponds to one and two, or one, three, which corresponds to one and three, or finally two, three, which corresponds to two and three. Now, of course, the column player could play a support of size three, but we're only considering non-degenerate games, so we only need to consider supports of the same size, so we don't consider anything else. So, as an example, I'm going to consider... So, 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 sorry, so then what, the, what, the, what we need to do in the algorithm is look at all possible pairings. So, um, we'd look at this i with this j, this i with this j, and this i with this j. So, we have three possibilities, but you can imagine bigger games, we have even more of them. So um, the one I'm going to consider as an example here is i equals j equals 1, 2. Okay, so we're saying that both players play their first two strategies, which means we're, in, a, in essence, looking at this um, game here. So once we've done that, we use the best response um, condition, um, which tells us two things, which tells us that all... Uh, that a best response is a, a, a mixed strategy is a best response if, if all supports of that best of strategy have the same uh, utility, but also that utility must be maximal. So uh, for the row player, this means that the row player must make the column player indifferent. This is where the, all the utilities must be the same. So we got one half of sigma r1 minus one of sigma r2 
has got to be equal to minus sigma r1 plus 3 sigma r2. And so, so that comes from you know, this equation, comes from this right here, and this equation comes from this right here. Okay? So this is simply saying that the only way uh, the row player's uh, strategy can be a best response sorry, the column player strategy can be a best response to the row is if the row player's two supports have the same utility, okay? So we solve this and uh, just by uh, using some basic algebra, three over two sigma r1 is gotta be equal to four sigma r2. And so we get that sigma r1 is gotta be equal to eight thirds of sigma r2. But of course, this is a probability vector. And so we know that sigma r, so, but, sigma r1 plus sigma r2 is equal to one. So we in fact get that sigma r is equal to eight over 11 and three over 11, okay? And then we do the same thing for the column player, but now our equations are gonna be that this must have the same utility as this, okay? And so we get that sigma C1 plus sigma C2 has to be equal to 2 sigma C1 minus sigma C2, um, which in turn is just 2 sigma C2 is equal to sigma C1, um, but sigma C1 plus sigma C2 has got to be equal to 1. And so we get that sigma c is equal to one third, two third, zero. Okay, so now that we've done these uh, these two calculations, what we found are two pairs of strategies that, when played against each other, the supports within the strategies have equal utility. All right. Now that doesn't for 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 the row player. That's saying that okay, if the column player is uh, playing. Um, playing these two strategies, so it's playing uh, one, two, then um, this makes uh, the column player indifferent. And the column player has made the row player indifferent. But the thing with the row player is that the row player is not only indifferent between the two strategies and the support, this support is actually all the strategies. But of course, for the column player, we might have a particular utility here that is going to be equal to each other, but it might not necessarily be bigger than the utility of playing this strategy. And that's the, the second part of the best response condition, which is not just that the utilities of the supports must be equal, but actually that the utilities must be maximal. Now, it's very straightforward for us to just check this, and we'd go sigma r b. So in other words, when the row player is playing this sigma r, what are the utilities of the column player? So just by taking eight, 11, 8 over 11 and 3 over 11 and multiplying through, we get 1 over 11, 1 over 11, and 2 over 11. And we see that, okay, within the support that we're playing, as expected, the utilities are equal. Both supports give us uh, ut um, utility 1 over 11. But outside of the utility, it's not. So what the column player would do is say, okay, if you're playing one two and I'm playing one two, then I'll play a third two third as and what and you'll play eight eleven over three of eleven. But if you're playing eight over eleven over three of eleven, actually, I see that it's in my interest to just budge over, uh, budge over and play the third uh, strategy outside of the support. So this is not not a Nash equilibrium, okay. So this is one of the three cases that we need to consider. We've considered this case. I'm going to skip this case because if you do the algebra for this, you see actually that as soon as we impose uh, this restriction, that what we get is not a probability vector, so there's nothing to consider. And the next case we we'll consider is this one. Just as a reminder, our game is A equals 1, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0. B is equal to a, a half minus one minus a half one three 
and 2. And we're looking at the case that i is equal to 1, 2, because there's nothing else I can be, and j is equal to 2, 3. So we're looking at this game, or the sub-game, so to speak. Um, we do the exact same thing. So the equation for the, the row players are sigma 1 plus 3 minus sigma r1 plus 3 sigma r2 has got to be equal to a half of sigma r1 plus 2 sigma r2. And so that's this corresponds to this and this corresponds to uh, this. And you can see that I've missed out a minus sign there. Um, and that just gives us that sigma r1 is equal to 2 sigma r2. So sigma r is equal to 2 thirds, 1 third. For the column player, we have that sigma c2 minus sigma c3 has got to be equal to minus sigma c2 plus 0 sigma c3. And again, that's just this corresponds to this, and this corresponds to that. Um, and now, same kind of thing, the, the row player has nowhere else to go, so that, 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 that is a best response to this sigma c. But is sigma c a best response to sigma r? Oh, sorry, I've uh, actually forgotten to solve the actual equation. Um, this gets to 2 sigma c2 equals sigma c3, and so sigma c is equal to 0, a third, 2 thirds. Um, and then we, we simply have that sigma r b is now equal to 0, a third, a third. And so, yep, these two things are equal, but now, furthermore, they're also bigger than whatever's not being played, okay? Which simply does give us that this is a Nash equilibrium.